The Ancient Egyptians Probably the most famous ancient civilization of them all. Extensively researched, excavated, and documented. The archaeological data collected and cataloged regarding this mysterious ancient people far exceeds any other. A worldwide fascination with a group who flourished at the feet of some of the most amazing and yet baffling structures on Earth. Attributed with their construction, yet it is difficult to see just how or why they did not document such a monumental task. A civilization whose lifeblood, whose most precious and valued jewel was not bought with money or even made of gold. It was a river, the Nile. The ancient Egyptians were a highly advanced group, and they shared an affinity with water manipulation, a possible clue to the construction of the pyramids. Although the Jewel of the Nile is known by most as nothing but a fictional motion picture, starring such characters as Michael Douglas and Danny DeVito, there does actually exist a thing, an instrument, which the Egyptians undoubtedly held in a similar regard to the giant green emerald sought within the film. Known as the Nilometer, thousands upon thousands of people from all over the world visit Egypt each year and nearly all overlook this once most invaluable of instruments. Between June and September, in a season the Egyptians called Akhet, high within the Ethiopian mountains, enormous volumes of snow which had accumulated throughout the long winter melts with the quickly changing seasons, sending a torrent of water into ancient Egypt, causing the banks of the river to burst, overflowing onto the flat desert plains. Amazingly, the Egyptians had figured out that by measuring this forceful annual flooding of the surrounding lands, they could accurately predict the following year's crop. During the flooding of the Nile, rich fertile silts brought down from high within the Ethiopian mountains are dumped upon the land. This silt was then used by the farmers that year to grow the crops for Egypt. By measuring the amount of flood water, they could accurately tell how much plant food would be available throughout the year. Therefore, being able to foresee the possible onset of a famine many months in advance. This, of course, absent one of the curses of Egypt, or more precisely, locusts. The Nilometer not only measured the height of the floodwaters, but also their clarity. If it wasn't for this invaluable tool, the ancient Egyptian culture would never have flourished to such a degree clearly an extremely important tool, which not only indicates their in-depth knowledge of natural cycles, but indicated a strong affinity to water. Technological methods of lifting heavy objects may have been possible with the use of water. By manipulating the fact that it is a liquid, an acquisition of in-depth knowledge of quote, containing and draining, end quote, given time, one could have undoubtedly created wooden machines capable of lifting many weights in many ways. Regardless of these studies, the Nilometer is a remarkable contraption, and one which clearly deserves more attention. A number of people who frequent our work have requested a more detailed video regarding one of the mysteries we so often focus upon here on the channel. There are many sites that we feel are deserving of in-depth focus. Our mission has always been to enlighten those who may not have been aware of the many different, compelling, and often controversial realities surrounding countless ancient ruins that throughout their lives have been explained away with a lie. Undoubtedly, the most well-known, most commonly explored, and thus the ruin most suited for our viewers' acquirement of a knowledge armory is Giza. Indeed, there are many people you will meet throughout your life that will have delved into the mysteries of Egypt. However, this experience, unbeknownst to them, may have been fraught with a limited, illogical, academic account regarding the history of Giza's plateau. This video, then, is our gift to our viewer. To prove to all those who act like they know it all how little they actually do. The characteristics of the casing stones 
are undoubtedly one of our own most noted achievements. We feel little, if any, notice has been given to the facts we have realized regarding these stones. Yet, the evidence we have found will remain clear for all to see. These casing stones, although of an enormous size and as such were left by a lost civilization, are far younger than the sandstone in which they encase. Most of these casing stones, unfortunately robbed out during invasions within the last few centuries, are protecting stones which are actually far more eroded and thus far older beneath. However, additionally, we began to wonder just how old could the Great Pyramids be? Could these eroding sandstones actually be concealing a far larger, far older structure beneath? Also discovered here on our channel, the supporting evidence to this hypothesis, most notably along the east side of Khufu and in numerous other places where the smaller sandstones have been robbed out, is, as we suspected, a far larger exoskeleton. We strongly believe these enormous megalithic blocks that we have previously estimated to be many hundreds of tons in weight are actually the original oldest blocks of the pyramids. We also believe that the more modern, currently recognized casing stones were actually inspired by these more heavily eroded smaller sandstone blocks, now concealing these mammoth megaliths. This makes the layers we believe that adorn the Great Pyramid numbers three, with the two more modern layers being conservation efforts, undoubtedly undertaken at vastly different times within history. Just how old is the Great Pyramid? Just how impressive was ancient Egypt? For example, the oldest surviving obelisk at Heliopolis, and therefore in Egypt, was undeniably cut, transported, and lifted into position at an unknown time in history, using now lost technology and knowledge. It is a stone 20 meters in height, weighing an astonishing 121 tons. And this enormous, unexplainable, impossible monolith is not the only one left upon the plateau. There are many more dotted all over Giza. For example, the sarcophagus of Amenemet III, a pair of quartzite monoliths, discovered in the early 20th century, hang above this supposed tomb. These gigantic stones effortlessly support the weight above, each estimated to weigh 110 metric tons. The Colossi of Memnon, these two gigantic artworks were built from single pieces of stone. They are orientated toward the sunrise at winter solstice, estimated to weigh anywhere from 600 to 1,000 tons each. Modern technology allows for the movement of such weights. However, any civilization claimed by academia, actually once being responsible for the transportation of such stones, is absurd. Who could have possibly transported such enormous stones to these locations? Not only transported them, but worked them into masterpieces they once were, disposing of all waste, presumably also weighing many tons. And there are many others. In the temple east of Khafre's Pyramid, for example, there lay blocks regularly, yet quietly estimated to weigh over 400 tons. How can modern academia claim such tasks were undertaken by our modern ancestors. Anyone aware of the true accomplishments involved in the construction of the Giza Plateau must now see this hypothesis as severely lacking any satisfactory explanations. Mortuary Temple of Menkara still possesses some astonishing unexplained feats. There are some estimates of the blocks within the temple, most notably within the surviving walls of the mortuary, weighing as much as 220 tons. The heaviest granite ashlars, imported from Aswan Quarry many miles away, weighing in at more than 30 tons. There are many incredible, inexplicable features upon the Giza Plateau. Many of them, unfortunately, yet predictably, little shared academically. Yet it remains a place of invaluable existent truths, many discrediting that which are passed off as current academic fact. Giza is an astonishing place, and the one we feel most likely to expose academia once and for all. It is a plateau we find highly compelling.